Hello, my name is Terry. This video will cover our 2003 field investigation of the Lehman House Bed and Breakfast located in downtown St. Louis. Construction of the mansion began back in 1892 and was completed in the following year. There are at least five known deaths to have occurred within the mansion. The most frequently seen ghost inside the Lehman House is that of Edward. He's seen as a full apparition and most frequently sighted inside the master bedroom. Other ghosts have also been seen inside the mansion. One is the figure of a semi-transparent figure of a woman and the other is of a female child. Many sounds are also associated with this haunting, including the sounds of footsteps walking the hallway of the second floor. There have also been reported an unusual sound of wheels on the second floor rolling across the floor. People have also reported hearing the sound of music from the 1920s playing, like a party was in progress and hearing people's voices accompanying the music. Most people are aware of the hauntings surrounding the Lent Mansion, but very few are aware or bother to investigate the hauntings surrounding the Lehman House. I've been to both. I've done about a dozen investigations at the Lent Mansion, but only one at Lehman House. But that one investigation was far more active than anything that occurs on a typical night at the Lent Mansion. I would have to give the nod as to the Lehman House being more haunted than the Lent Mansion for the sheer level of activity. It just happened to coincide that during our investigation they were doing remodeling and the owner did inform us that during times of remodeling the level of activity does increase. The owner of the Lehman Mansion needed to attend several social functions this evening so she had to leave early and I arrived early so that she could hand me the key and I was the only person inside the mansion for several hours. This proved critical in that I was able to perform several background tests and collect some information before the other group members had arrived. After the owner had departed for the early evening, I set up my voice recorder and began going from room to room asking questions, attempting to capture an EVP voice. I had no success in doing this. There were no replies to any of my questions. However, after about an hour and a half, something unusual did happen. While I was walking along the stairway, going from one level to the next, you can hear the sound on the next clip of my camcorder's lens cap cover striking the tripod as I'm moving. While this is going on, the sound of a female voice can clearly be heard. And you must remember, there is no one inside this building except myself. There is no way to explain this voice. It sounds like a moaning voice. The following clip was recorded in the upstairs hallway. If you listen carefully, you'll hear a breathy, exhaling voice. This isn't me or anyone else in the group. We've not been able to identify these sounds, but this is a very common sound at haunted locations where you'll hear the sound of a human breath, but it's not an individual doing it. One unusual thing happened three times during the night. There's a small door located to the side of the main stairway. It opened up three times on its own. At first we thought this was pressure changes within the house by opening up the front door. But when we tried it as an experiment, we could never replicate it. We also thought that maybe the weight of several people going up and down the stairs was forcing the door open. Again, we tried this and were unable to duplicate the door opening. It's a very tight-fitting door, and we never did come up with a satisfactory answer as to why it was opening. The next clip was recorded by Adam and Jason Winkler. It shows a strange, unexplained light moving in one direction, 
then abruptly changing directions before moving out of the field of view. Most of these types of lights I dismiss as dust orbs, but this one appears to be a genuine light of unknown origin. While it was very late at night, Mick went up to the attic room to take some photographs. Out of the corner of his eye while he was snapping a picture, he saw an oval-shaped shadow moving in the room. He immediately left the area and came downstairs to let us know what was going on. This is one of the few instances when we had someone actually chased out of a room because of a haunting activity. <laughs> There's nothing up there. There's something up there. That room almost felt like a blanket had been wrapped around you when you walked in. Um, I have a tendency sometimes to shoot the camera with both eyes open. That's meaning I'll look through the viewfinder, of course, with my right eye, but I'll look through the past the camera with my left eye. Uh, this time in point, I was using the same camera, a Canon Elan 2E 35mm 400 speed, this time color film, a speed light attached to it. As I was shooting the shot photos in the room, as I was looking through the viewfinder, I saw what appeared to be a shadow form right in the middle of the camera. Uh, it scared me enough that I almost knocked over a member of the group whenever I tried to leave the room. It was just something that, in pitch black, and then the flash lit up the room. I saw what appeared to be an oval shadow shape in the center of the room. After leaving the room, I did get enough courage. I went back in and snapped more photographs. Unfortunately, nothing was found on the developed negatives or on the prints. So I was really hoping to see something. The following clip is probably the finest shadow capture I've ever gotten. I'd set up the camcorder inside the attic room on a tripod with the night shot lights facing outward looking into the hallway itself so that nothing could be seen approaching the attic room. I'd set up motion sensors both inside the room and outside to detect any form of motion in case we captured anything. Upon review of the footage, a massive shadow figure can be seen inside the attic room itself, but whatever it is, is not setting off any of the motion sensors. It wasn't seen entering this room, and it wasn't seen leaving the room. It is only seen entering the field of view for a few moments and then leaving. This is something that we can't account for because nothing should be able to produce a shadow like this. There's no explanation for what could trigger a shadow of this nature. I've used this equipment for years and it has never produced anything quite like this. But this is, I believe, a shadow figure captured at virtual point-blank range. It's a very rare event to get this close to a shadow figure. Even though this video was shot in the year 2003, the Lehman House is still a functioning bed and breakfast owned by the same individual. 
it is still possible to rent rooms inside the Lehman House and conduct investigations, but I would advise letting the owner know what your intentions are if you do intend to conduct a ghost hunt the way we did.